هنتكلم النهاردة إن شاء الله على الأبدومينال إنجرز Etiology of abdominal injuries. Abdominal injuries can be classified into closed injuries, open injuries, and blast injuries. In closed injuries, the abdominal wall is intact. It may be in the form of contusions and crush. Injuries of the abdomen, which is caused by blows, kicks, falls, or run-over accidents, which often damage the intraperitoneal viscera without rupturing of the muscles of the abdominal wall. In open injuries, damage to the abdominal viscera may be produced. Not only by stab, gunshot, or impalement injuries to the abdomen, but also by similar injuries to the chest, loin, buttock, or perineum. So, abdominal injuries may be an extension of injuries to these areas. The third form is by blast injuries. The third form of abdominal injuries is blast injuries, in which the blast waves cause shear waves, which may lead to submucosal hemorrhages, mesenteric tears or perforation near the ileocecal area. Solid organs like the liver may be severely lacerated. In addition to the blast waves. The produced Missiles after the explosion may cause different blunt or penetrating abdominal injuries. So, blast injuries can cause the form or may be presented in the form of that of closed injuries or open injuries. Clinical picture. Generally, the patient may be shocked, and the signs of external trauma to the abdominal wall are often present, but their absence soon after injury doesn't rule out the possibility of intraperitoneal damage, which will soon manifest itself in one of two ways. So, in the abdominal injuries, the patient should be admitted to hospital for at least 24 hours after the insult. Patient may be presented with internal hemorrhage, which may arise from injury to the solid viscera mesenteries or the main blood vessels. It is characterized by progressive pallor, tachycardia and hypotension with thirst, air hunger and subnormal temperature. Locally, there may be tenderness and slight rigidity over the injured organ and shifting, shifting dullness may be elicited. The second form of presentation, patient may be presented with a picture of brutonites, which follows rupture of hollow viscous. It manifests itself by pain, tenderness, 
rigidity, fever, and tachycardia. In late cases, there is obliteration of liver dullness due to the escape of gas, shifting dullness in the flanks due to the presence of Bretonian exit, dead silence on auscultation due to paralysis of the gut. Again, a patient soundly presented without any picture of internal hemorrhage or brutonitis after trauma should be admitted in hospital for 24 hours at least after the insult of trauma. For diagnosis for abdominal trauma, تكلمنا ان العيان ممكن يبقى فيه evident clinical picture of trauma or it may be in a state of compensation or non-evident clinical picture and for those observation is indicated تكلمنا ان المندتر ان انا اعمل admission and close observation for those patients for 24 hours at least. Then a group of patients who can confirm suspicious signs of trauma indicating exploration and it's better for those patients to do exploratory laboratory. This should not be delayed until frank signs appear as well as stated it is safer to look and see than to wait and see investigations laboratory investigations blood picture and hematocrit value لو المريض بتاعي is running under observation blood picture and hematocrit value is of importance as a declining hemoglobin and hematocrit value denote bleeding a continuous bleeding status leukocytic count also of importance and follow up of patients running under observation early leukocytic count may be normal but a rising white blood count points to perotonites serum amylase a high serum amylase level suggests pancreatic injury usually this type of, of patients had a high magnitude of trauma a pure pancreatic injury is rare and it is suggested with a collection of fluid in the lesser sac ultrasonography or CT examination a high serum amylase level suggests this condition investigations radiological investigations like plain x-ray chest and abdominal x-ray plain chest and abdominal x-ray which are done in hemodynamically stable patients may reveal fracture of the lower lips fracture of the lower ribs or bilfus or the presence of a foreign body like the site of a missile or it may show a free gas under diaphragm indicating injury of a hollow viscous the second radiological investigation is abdominal ultrasound or what is known as FAST which stands for abdominal focused abdominal sonography for trauma which should be present 
and the ER. This investigation is non-expensive, quick, non-invasive, and can be performed at the bedside. It has a sensitivity of about 85 to 95% for the detection of intra-abdominal fluid or blood. For example, in cases perisplenic collection or prehepatic or even retroperitoneal hematoma. Its disadvantage is that it is operator dependent and not sensitive for diagnosis of bowel injury. Therapy method for uh, C4 radiological investigations is CT abdominal scan. CT abdominal scan is accurate or very accurate in detecting injury to solid organs and in grading and follow up of these injuries, especially the contrast enhanced. CT abdominal scan. It is very accurate in detecting injuries to organs. It is, not, it is also sensitive in diagnosis of retroperitoneal and diaphragmatic injuries. But its disadvantage is that it is not sensitive in the detection of bowel injuries or acute pancreatic injuries though it can detect free gas inside the peritoneal cavity. Next line of investigation is diagnostic peritoneal lavage which is indicated in blunt abdominal trauma in adult associated with Suspicion of organ injury with equivocal signs. Unreliable abdominal examination because the patient is unconscious in cases of head trauma or drug or alcohol intoxication. Lastly, unexplained hypotension that may be caused by blood loss. Contraindications. Evident intra-abdominal organ injury that requires laparotomy, pregnancy, liver cirrhosis, severe obesity, prior abdominal surgery. Procedure. The abdomen is prepared with an antiseptic solution and is dropped with sterile towels. Local infiltration of local anesthetic like lidocaine in the middle line below the umbilicus. A 2 to 3 cm skin incision followed by 1 cm incision in the linea alba. Britonium is entered with a dialysis catheter. The tube is directed posteriorly and inferiorly into the pelvis. Then aspiration with a syringe. Gross blood or gross enteric contents are indications for immediate laparotomy without further procedure. But if neither blood nor enteric content is aspirated, one liter of warm saline is instilled into the bretonium by intravenous tubing. After waiting for five minutes, the empty saline bottle is placed down in a dependent position to siphon the lavage fluid out of the abdomen. A sample of this fluid is sent to the laboratory. Positive findings that indicate or diagnose an intra-abdominal surgery 
and thus require laparotomy are red blood cell count more than 100,000 per milliliter, white blood cell count more than 500 per milliliter, elevated level of amylase. Lastly, the catheter is removed and the linear alba and skin are closed with sutures. We can see that diagnostic proteinal lavage can be replaced largely by the recent tools for investigations like ultrasonography or CT examination. But this depends upon the place draining these patients. and the availability of these tools. Last line of investigation is diagnostic laparoscopy, which is done in hemodynamically stable patients with blunt abdominal trauma to detect the exact site and extent of injuries. Also, it has a place in open abdominal injuries to determine whether these injuries are actually penetrating or not, thus avoiding many unneeded surgeries. Treatment of abdominal trauma once indicated an urgent exploratory laparotomy after adequate preparation by morphia, transfusion, suction, and antibiotics. Incision. The abdomen is usually opened through a right paraumbilical paramedian incision. On opening of the abdomen, an escaping gas, turbid fluid, or fecal matter indicates injury to holoviscus while a large effusion of blood suggests damage to the solid viscera, momentum or mesentery. However, a clean peritoneal cavity doesn't exclude injury to the bowel, since small bowel perforations are usually sealed by the prolapsed mucous membrane. Exploration. The solid viscera and mesentery are examined first, so that any source of bleeding can be dealt with and located. The small intestine is systematically examined throughout its entire length, commencing usually at the cecum. If a perforation is discovered, the affected loop is held in a non-crushing clamp and retained at the surface until the rest of the gut is examined since the discovery of further injury may influence the treatment to be adopted. The stomach and duodenum are inspected and palpated. The transverse colon is brought out for examination and by suitable retraction the other parts of the colon are examined in turn. Procedure The injured viscera are dealt with as follows. Ruptured spleen is best treated by splenectomy or by splenic salvage surges. Liver the tear is repaired with deeply placed mattress sutures of thick cat gut supported by a batch of falciform ligament or rectus sheath so that they don't cut out. 
if the tear is inaccessible, the abdominal incision is extended into the chest along the right eighth intercostal space to allow proper exposure and debridement. Mesentery Small or radial tears are treated by simple sutures, but large or transverse tears interfering with the blood supply of the related segment of the bowel are treated by resection anastomosis. Small intestine. Small perforations can be closed by a single burst string suture, but large wounds are repaired transversely by two layers to avoid narrowing of the lumen. Resection anastomosis is indicated for multiple injuries confined to one segment, for extensive laceration and bruising, and for infarction of the gut due to laceration of the mesentery. Colon Perforations are best treated by extraorization, the affected loop being mobilized and brought to the surface as in ball Benkelux operation for carcinoma. Stomach and duodenum, the tear is repaired transversely in two layers to avoid narrowing of the lumen. Pancreas, the tear is repaired accurately by silk sutures and the lesser sac should always be drained through the flank. Gallbladder and bile ducts, angles of the gallbladder are treated by cholecystectomy. A torn bile duct may be repaired by suture over a T tube or by anastomosis to the jejunum. Urinary bladder, the tear is repaired in two layers and enduring full scassitor is inserted for several days to keep the bladder empty. Lastly, closure, all free fluid in the peritoneal cavity is removed by suction and mobbing with gauze. Peritoneal cavity should always be drained by a strip of corrugated rubber inserted at the site of the lesion and brought out through the flank. If frank protonite is present, a drain is inserted into the rectovesical pouch through a suprapubic step. To summarize treatment of patient with abdominal trauma, there are a group of patients for whom urgent laparotomy should be done. These patients are those who have general and local clinical manifestations of intra-abdominal bleeding like pallor, tachycardia, hypotension together with abdominal tenderness, rigidity and distension. Those with general and local clinical manifestation of protonites. Those who have stab wounds with protruding viscous, which means that injury extended deeper than the parietal proteinium. And those patients with missile injuries of the abdomen. Still, we have another group of patients who are compensated without any local manifestations indicating intraperitoneal hemorrhage or, or peritonitis or an equivocal signs. For those patients, Investigations should be paid, the previous investigations we mentioned should be paid for those patients 
at any time there is decompensation or signs indicating continuous intraperitoneal hemorrhage or peritonitis this patient should be shifted to laparotomy also هنتكلم دلوقتي على diseases of the umbilicus our group of these diseases are hernias three varieties of hernia occur at the umbilicus the congenital variety which is known as exomphalus the infantile variety and the adult variety Tiny group of diseases is infections. Onphalitis is an inflammation of the stump of the umbilical cord, which may lead to local sepsis, spreading cellulitis, thrombophlebitis of the umbilical vein with liver abscess, or tetanus neonatorum, umbilical. Dermatitis may arise from fungus or parasitic infection, umbilical polyp, which is enteroteratoma, umbilical granuloma, which is a mass of granulation tissue due to chronic infection and irritation, it should be curated and then cauterized with silver nitrate stick. Umbilical calculus, an inspissated mass of dirt and discomated epithelium. The calculus should be extracted and the umbilicus is kept regularly clean and dry. Third group of diseases is umbilical fistulae, which may be Fecal due to patent vitello intestinal duct or onphaloenteric fistula, tuberculous peritonitis, or due to malignant ulceration of the colon through the umbilicus. Second type of fistula is the urinary fistula due to patent urecus which is normally a fibrous band extending from the umbilicus to the apex of the urinary bladder, representing the obliterated portion of the allantois. The third type of fistula is biliary fistula, due to subacute perforation of the inflamed gallbladder. The fourth group of diseases of the umbilicus is tumors. First type is enteroteratoma or umbilical polyp. It is not a true tumor, but a biloboidal mass due to persistence of the distal end of the vitello-intestinal duct, which becomes inverted outwards and exposed to infection and friction causing irritative hyperplasia of its epithelial surface. Treatment, the polyp should be excised after transfixion of its space. Second group of tumors is endometrioma, which occurs in middle-aged females as a small, painful, fleshy tumor at the bottom of the umbilicus. Treatment is by excision of the umbilicus, which is known as umbilectomy. Third type of tumors is squamous carcinoma, which is very rare at the umbilicus, but owing to its site, it's liable to metastasize to the axillary and inguinal lymph nodes on both sides 
as well as to the abdominal glands. Fourth type of tumor is secondary carcinoma, which is always an adenocarcinoma spreading directly or by lymphatics from an abdominal viscous. Now we will talk about diseases of the abdominal wall. First disease is hematoma of the rectus sheath. This is a rare condition due to rupture of the rectus muscle or inferior epigastric vessels in elderly patients and pregnant or parturient females. It may occur during infectious fevers which cause degeneration of the muscle or during violent coughing or sneezing in normal individuals. Clinically, there is pain, tenderness and swelling over the affected part of the rectus so that the condition is often mistaken for appendicitis or twisted ovarian cyst. Treatment is by evacuation of the hematoma and ligation of the epigastric vessels. Second disease is this moy tumor. This is a locally malignant fibrosarcoma which arises from the rectus sheath or the rectus abdominis muscle. It grows slowly, infiltrates the protonium and subcutaneous tissue, but produces no metastasis. The tumor is hard in consistency and pinkish white in color and its cut surface has a tendon-like appearance, hence the name desmoid tumor. Histologically, it is composed of cellular fibrous tissue containing multi-nucleated giant cells and well-formed blood vessels. Clinically, the tumor occurs most often in multiparous women as a hard nodular mass in the lower part of the abdominal wall. It has an ill-defined edge which merges into the rectus and can be moved slightly from side to side, but becomes fixed on contraction of the muscle. Treatment is by wide excision of the tumor with the whole breadth of the affected muscle and one inch margin of healthy tissues. The resultant defect is closed by flaps of fascia and whole skin or bitter by mesh. Thank you.